Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code, the ZIP Code. I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we're at one of Aero Building's new projects. This is our new Prairie Aero, and we're going to talk about window openings and how we're prepping the window openings specifically for the windows here on this job today. Let's do it now. Okay, so let's start with general assembly of the house. This is a Zip R assembly over top a 2x6 wall. The uh, the exterior is a mix of lap siding and some stonework, and uh, it's gonna be a really nice house, but we have to know what the exterior finishes are before we decide how the windows are setting, before we decide how we have to waterproof our openings. So let me tell you why that matters. In this case, we have uh, a lap siding on this wall. So we have siding that's gonna come over. We have uh, windows that are gonna be pushed flush to the face of our batten strips. Our batten strips for this siding is a 3 8 fir plywood that we're ripping. It doesn't get any cheaper and easier to come by than this. We let the lumber yard rip it, they're pretty cheap. We're gonna picture frame on three sides or horseshoe the rough opening in our batten strip. And then we're gonna infill our uh, jams head and sill of the window with zip. That gives us a water resistant surface, a water resistant surface, and then a spacer so that when this siding comes across, and our uh, trim sits on our window. The trim can sit on the face of the window and on the batten strip at the same time. Now our elevations are correct. So now that we have this, all this has to be connected. Let's go to the next window and talk about how we're gonna do that. Now, as with anything, there's uh, you know the, the proverbial million ways to skin a cat sort of thing. On this house, we have the budget and we have the time to do what we think is our most A plus assembly. That's not to say that tape is not more than sufficient, but if I have the option, this is my favorite choice. And it comes into play really strongly here. Our zip panel on our jams is flush with our um, batten strips. That way we have one surface to, to go across out here. You'll note on the bottom, we do not have that batten strip. That way, after the window goes in, we have a free draining cavity behind, underneath the window and on the face of the window. So we have this little odd elevation change that is the problem here because we're, we're 3 8 of an inch back here, we're 3 of an eighth here, 3 8 out here, and we're 3 8 out on our vertical piece here. With the liquid flash, we're not doing absolutely every surface. We're just doing where we need to feel safe. So our sill is complete from back all the way to the outside. It's one monolithic layer of the zip liquid flash. Anything that gets into that window opening at any point from wherever, as long as it can get to the sill, it can drain out. On the sides, we're trying to connect our zip sheathing around to our zip sheathing. Now we're not really worried about water penetration here. Technically this probably could be a two by six if we wanted, but we have that zip bar that we're trying to cover up. So we wanted to go ahead and put this in here so that we create a nice little surface to get across that foam. So in that instance, we're zip liquid flash up, out, around, and in, and now our air control layer goes from this zip to this zip. That's really important. And it's really important that at the corners, at the unions of this piece, if there was a split in that zip on the, uh, on the jam, that it be flashed all the way at least beyond where the window's gonna go. So our window sits about like that in the opening. It sits back in the opening, it's, it sits flush, but the back side of the, the, the window is about three inches in, something like that. At that back side is where our air control for our window is gonna be. So window flush with the batten strips, horseshoe tape on three sides, up both jams with the fintrum, across the head with the fintrum. Now the thing sheds water, open at the bottom, like every window manufacturer says, anything that gets in there can drain out. And our air seal is the back side. So we have back dam of uh, backer rod and then air dam around the entire all four sides. Now we have a window that's free draining, that it's air sealed and it's water managed. And everything is our connection to our connection to our connection. And now we have one layer or one system that's handling every single piece of air and water and technically vapor and thermal as well. This is like our pinnacle of our pinnacle. 
the one thing that everybody's gonna see here that they might go, well, why the heck would you do that? You can see that we have hard lines in our material. We mask the opening off. I know that that's not in the budget for some projects. I know that that's not in the timeline for some projects. This project is allowing us to do absolute A grade work. And so we're gonna produce A grade work. This is cleaner, it looks nicer. It doesn't necessarily affect the way it performs. But I also think that when it comes to it, we waste a little less material because we know exactly how far to spread it. When we peeled the tape, you'll see there, there wasn't much that we got on the tape that we had to get off. We we're actually very diligent about not wasting the material then. I actually think we use more liquid flash when we don't mask off. And just so we're clear, I did this at my personal house. So I think this is the way to go. Stay tuned, we're gonna do a part two. We're gonna do a hybrid system here where if we didn't wanna liquid flash the whole thing, what would you do? Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Don't forget to follow me, Jake Bruton, on Instagram, and have a good day.